You're listening to 630 Chad Afternoons with Bryn Griffiths. Six. Okay, you know my, my cancer story. I've said it a million times on here. I almost feel like I'm telling it to you too often. But you know what? Anytime I see a great cancer story, I like to address it. I like to talk to people about it. Even if it isn't a great one where we can maybe think about taking that and turning it into a positive at some point, I'm on board with that. But it's not every day that a Calgary-based scientist receives financial backing from the U.S. military to carry out their research. What am I talking about? Well, joining us from the University of Calgary is Professor Dr. Christina Rinker. Hello, Christina. Hello. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. You survived the weekend? <laughs> Absolutely. It That's was great good. to have a, a great long weekend, yes. Okay, so I, I you know, I, I'm amazed at this. I love this. But uh, what have you discovered? A blood test, right? <laughs> Yes. Well, actually, for the past decade, we've been developing a new type of blood test. Okay. And we have validated it now in women in Canada and UK and in the US um, for a portion of women. And this DOD funding enables us to expand that to New York City, Phoenix, and another group in the UK. Uh, to further validate the technology. Okay, this is to detect breast cancer. So uh, how far ranging is this test? This test is to um, be used as a screening tool for breast breast cancer. Wow. So in the breast cancer area, uh, women undergo screening typically by mammography. Mm-hmm. Well, we need new tools in the area to increase access to more women and to enable more women to be detected at earlier stages. Okay, Christina, so how does this work? It's just a simple blood test? Is it as simple as all that? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so users would uh, get a, a, doctor's rec- a doctor's referral. Uh, okay. You'd get a requisition, and uh, it's a, a blood sample, less than a teaspoon or a tablespoon of blood that's collected. And then that's run in our accredited laboratory here in Calgary. How long does it take to find the results? Uh, well, the test typically takes a few days to process and get the results reports out to physicians. So how long have you been working on this one, Christina? Well, the, the, this technology is a new type of blood test. So okay. as opposed to like a cholesterol test where it measures one thing, this test is a new generation or a new class of blood test that involves multiple measuring of multiple targets in your bloodstream. And then it uses machine learning based software. So it's sophisticated software to be able to interpret that to indicate if a positive signal, if imaging, if you need to go in for diagnostic imaging. Um, so this has been in clinical studies since 2018. Uh, we've, we've had some wonderful support from the Alberta government to uh, support the validation and, and continued expansion of the data for this test. Are you amazed at how fast this seems to have moved along or is it slow by you? Like, I I think that's fast, but what's your take on that? (laughs) Well, it's uh, it's certainly been a long process. There are many uh, steps to bringing the test to the market. So we developed the the platform technology, the new way of measuring things in your bloodstream. Right. Uh, we, We found the things we need to measure and validated that. Then we had to put it all together and validate that. And then we had to you know, test it in the wild in clinical samples. And uh, so we will have our first results coming out from that. We've, we've published in a couple of international conferences. Uh, so further publications are coming out for that. So we've come a long way. We've done a lot. Full accreditation for the, the test, uh, CE marking on the test. But still a long ways to go. So uh, one of the key things is reimbursement and procurement or getting getting groups to pay for the test and building it into the guidelines. So we still have, uh, you know, a journey to go. Oh, but yeah. It's uh, been great progress. Uh, this is the only test in the world that has been demonstrated to s- detect small breast tumors. $3 million. By from blood. The, <laughs> yes, there you go. Uh, yes. $3 million from the U.S. Department of Defense. So you get this phone call or however they reached out to you. Yes. That, 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 you know what that tells me? It tells me that you are on the radar screen big time. I, I love hearing that news, but can you remember when you were uh, first informed that they were interested in what you were doing? Yes. So we, we do have a uh, clinical investigator from the U.S. So we found um, 
through conferences and through the, the strength of our data, found a, a key leader, a clinical leader out of the U.S. at a Cornell University. And so he and I partnered on putting in this grant application to the Department of Defense. They have a breast cancer research program um, that's really trying to you know push the envelope and get new tools available for their military personnel who are actually at elevated risk for cancers. So uh, we put this in and it's very onerous. (laughs) Um, And uh, we got it actually the first time we applied for it. So just um, fantastic partnership. Very exciting to get this um, this opportunity from the U.S. Department of Defense and looking to leverage that for with additional funding and expansion of clinical trials throughout the world. Okay, so I'm going to ask you to toot your own horn here. How big is this for people and mostly women, but there are some men with breast cancer? How 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 big is this? This is huge. I mean, we look right now at what's going on and. Uh, many women are actually not detected at the earliest invasive stage. That's because either they're not included in screening guidelines, uh, they're not participating in screening programs, or the technology is missing the breast cancer. So we desperately need new tools to enable early detection. With stage one or earliest invasive stage detection, it's 99% curable. Uh, those statistics flip when you get to stage four more yeah. advanced cancers. So it's really critical we get this uh, into the system, and it needs to be easy for women to use. Uh, so just imagine going to your doctor and, you know, you check off the, I'm going to get my cholesterol measured and I'm going to get my blood test run. Uh, so as we as we move forward, um, breast cancer is a, a great place for us to be um, developing new screening tools because there's a, a great need for it. The other thing is it's really becoming aware to most women that dense breast tissue can decrease the ability of mammography to detect tumors at their smallest size or smallest invasive size. So women with C and D breast density um, should get, you know, should ask uh, if they're currently getting screened, what their density is and know the implications of that. So there's, there's several organizations and the FDA has, uh, it, has announced or <laughs> appreciates the importance of this because now the U.S. starting into women are required to get their breast density scores as part of their imaging results from mammography. <laughs> so, uh, you know, this, I think, can fill an important gap in screening for half of women, you know, that have elevated density and may want an additional tool in addition to mammography. Christina, how accessible is this currently? How far is this going to explode now that uh, we're talking about it? Because obviously, if, if I'm paying attention, you, you've, you're, you're on the radar screen for a lot of people. So, so where are we at in terms of accessibility? So right now, we've, we're really focusing on getting some of this uh, expanded clinical data in for diverse populations that's going to be enabled by the Department of Defense grant, as well as our own clinical studies that have expanded. Uh, we have a lot of interest from the U.S. market in uh, pulling this in. So we're working towards those reimbursement packages in both, uh, you know, across North America and the U.S. and in Canada. And, uh, you know, getting it into the hands of clinicians as, um, you know, as part of those clinical study expansions and, and use of the test okay. uh, to look at, you know, how we expand uh, the use of the test or how we enter in a small way and then expand that usage. Um, you know, medicine is an area that takes a while to really uh, expand usage of a new type of technology such as this. Yeah. So we're working closely with the medical communities and partners and other stakeholders uh, to, to bring this out and, so that everybody understands what the test provides, what it doesn't provide, and how to make use of the results. We always talk about, you know, the Alberta health system is, is a mess. But you know what? You've got U of C. You've got the University of Alberta. We've got other colleges and universities as well here in the province of Alberta. We have the Tom Baker in Calgary. We have the Cross Cancer Institute here in Edmonton and various other foundations. This is just my take on it as being somebody who's uh, had stomach cancer. I think we're doing great work here in the province of Alberta. Do you agree with that? Absolutely. We have great research innovations that are coming through. And, uh, you know, what we have been working off, we spun off a company, uh, Cyandra, back in 2016 uh, to help with commercialization of the test. So really scaling the technology and bringing an international approach to the technology is really critical. So as as we in Alberta continue to expand those technologies and push them towards implementation to impact, uh, that's going to be a really critical um, aspect over the next decade. So is it baby steps the rest of the way here, or do you expect we're going to start to go up three, two or three steps at a time in the future? 
we will. We, <laughs> so we're we're pushing very fast yeah. with partners. So okay. I, I say I, I'd say certainly it's not like the uh, commercial expanse you would see with the the new app, right? A new app. Yes. Uh, it's a new medical technology. Um, while we have uh, regulatory approvals in North America as a laboratory developed test, uh, we do need to continue to push towards coverage of the test through different healthcare systems, and that is a longer process. So uh, we're continuing to work with health systems and payers to um, get the data packages that they're looking for to uh, you know to be able to pay for the test, and that's going to be a critical piece to you know larger scale expansion of the test. You're telling me two thumbs up, but calm down, Brent. That's what you're telling me here. And I get that. <laughs> uh, I love it. I think it's fantastic news. And, I, and let's just keep rolling with things. And thanks for your time today. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Okay. Really appreciate that. Well, sharing the story. Anytime. As, as we keep going with this story, we'll track you down, okay? Sounds good. All right. Thanks, Christina. Okay. Dr. Christina Rinker, professor, Department of Biomedical Engineering at the University of Calgary, developing a blood test to detect breast cancer. It's get we're, get, we're getting there. I honestly believe it. I want to believe it. I want to think about those who are suffering, you know, like are coming up behind me 20 years from now, that they won't have to go through what I went through or some of my friends have gone through and that type of thing and some of it tragically. So that's, uh, that's positive. I, that's a positive story. Love it going to take a break. When we come back, it's uh, it's time for Business Matters and Health Matters. We'll get right to it when we return right here on 630 Chad.